you, guys? Where'd you go? Oh, so I thought he done run off and hid somewhere, man. Man, for two weeks now, he's just like, I'm nervous, I'm nervous. I won't be able to hold my note out. I, I can't hardly breathe. I can't even breathe right now. Last night he said, I couldn't do it right now. I can't, I can't hardly breathe right now. And, uh, and Juliana uh, shirt us more. You nervous? She said, not yet. Did you get nervous when you got up here? You didn't? Man, you did good, sister. You mean looking at this crowd and you didn't get nervous? Praise the Lord, man. I wish I had your guts or backbone or whatever it is that you have. Luke chapter 4. I didn't put it on there. Did I? Is it? Yeah. Okay. Luke chapter 4. Uh, tell you what, let's stand if we could. If you love Jesus, say amen. Well, I can tell just by looking out here, for the most part, who went to the air show yesterday. You can tell they have a, a brighter hue of red on their face and arms and uh, some on the top of their head if they didn't have much covering it. And uh, so I hope y'all had a good time. I know I did, me and my family. Uh, Luke chapter 4, let's look at verses 1 through 13. And you can follow along as I read here. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing. When they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of thee, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will I give it. If thou, wilt, if thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and, and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from him. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. And Jesus answering said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. When the devil had ended all the temptations, he departed from him for a season. Now, Lord, we need you. Lord, we thank you for this time that we do get to get together and encourage each other, pray with each other, and help each other, and love each other. Lord, we reserve this time right here to gather around your word. And Lord, it's an important time. Give us tender hearts, yielded to your spirit, yielded to your word. Lord, help us. We, we all struggle with this that we're talking about. Help us in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. We've been going over the life of Jesus Christ here, and we're at this point where after his baptism, the Bible says that Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. In Matthew, we read that the purpose of this trip right here was to be tempted of the devil. It was here in the wilderness that he spent 40 days and 40 nights fasting. No food. Now, I have fasted before but never 40 days and 40 nights without food. Living in the wilderness, in the mountains, among the wild beasts. At the end of this time of fasting, this 40 days and 40 nights, the devil approaches Christ to tempt him. Now look, when I get hungry, I get weak. All right? When I get hungry, I, I eat an early lunch. I eat lunch 11, 11.30. If I go much later than that, really, if, if I'll start trembling. I'll feel like, man, I, I'm, I'm going to pass out. I, I've got to have something. I've got to put some fuel in the tank. If it goes a little beyond that, this lovable guy that you know here begins to grow faint and claws. And I begin to lose my mind little by little. It affects me, this this weakness. When I'm sick, man, I'm weak. You know what I mean, right? 
the devil here comes to Christ at a time of human weakness. He's been 40 days, 40 nights, listen, without food, without companionship, except for that of his father, and that's really all he has to have. But he's at a time of weakness, and the devil approaches him to tempt him. Now let me tell you something. The devil is not a dummy. He's sly. He's smart. He understands us. And the devil probably knows our weaknesses better than we know ourselves. And many times it's at a a moment of weakness that the devil will come to us and tempt us or that our own flesh will betray us or, or that the world tempts us. It's not always the devil. I think we give him a little too much credit sometimes. But it's in that moment of weakness. For some of us, our weakness is thinking we're strong. Oh, I've got this covered. Man, I have got it. It is under control. I saw a video once of this guy, uh, this MMA, these two guys getting ready to do some MMA fighting. And the the one guy was in the ring getting ready, and he was just standing there. He's He's just ready. The other guy, as he's being announced, is running around the ring, raising his hands. He's getting the crowd into it. Man, he's doing back flips. He's doing uh, backhand springs. He's flipping around like some kind of bug or something. And I mean, he's jumping. He's, I mean, he's just, he's all cocky, doing his hands real fast. And the other guy's just standing there. That one guy that's spazzing out over there, uh, uh, full of cockiness and confidence, he turns to the crowd and he's waving his hand. About that time, the bell rings. It's time for the fight. He turns around and he's still doing this and the other guy runs and jumps at him and Superman punches right in the jaw and knocks him out. Man, I mean, he he had all the confidence. He thought, I've got it made. that I'm going to win. I've already won this fight. And when he turns around, bam, and he's down. Sometimes our weakness is thinking that we're strength that we have it under control. Sometimes our weakness may be in a time of loneliness. It may be in a time of financial reversals, disappointment, discouragement, depression, time of anxiety. Sometimes it is a a, a change in life, even a good change. Look, you three that just graduated, man, that's a a momentous occasion that is worthy of celebration and rejoicing. Do let me warn you, though, for just a moment. Now this is a change in life, all right? You've reached a milestone. And many times it's when we reach those milestones and we say, oh, I finished it, that the devil comes in and sucker punches us. Okay? You be careful. We find here that in this scene, we find Christ and his approach of handling the temptation. Hebrews 2.18, the Bible says this, for in that he himself hath suffered being tempted. He is able to succor them that are tempted. So Christ, look, 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 excuse me just a minute. Okay, get that out. Christ can help us because He knows what it's like. He has been there. He was tempted. Yeah, but preacher, He was only had three temptations. Oh, no, 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 no. We'll see in just a minute. That was not the only time. The Bible says the devil left for a season. That implies that the devil came back later and tempted some more. Christ, it is his desire for us to to have victory, to live in this victory. And at the same time, the devil doesn't want us to have the victory. 1 John 3, 5, the Bible says, And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. So Christ came... He was tempted. He did not sin. He, he died for us, took our sins in His body. He conquered sin, death, and the grave for us. And He wants us to live in that victory. Nevertheless, the devil, who is a defeated foe, does not want you to live in the victory that has already been won for you. This, as I said, was not an isolated event in the time of Christ. It wasn't the only time that the devil tried tempting him in Luke 4, 13. Look at there in verse 13. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a what? Season, which tells us that that wasn't the only time the devil came back 
at another season to tempt Christ. Have you ever, how many of you have dealt with temptation before? Oh yeah, we all do, don't we? Have you ever noticed that some people fall into temptation and others plan on it? This one little boy, his father told him, Son, I don't want you to ever go swimming in that canal down there. It's dangerous. Son looked at his daddy and said, Yes, sir. That evening, the boy came home with a wet swimsuit. Son, where have you been? Well, I've been swimming in the canal. Well, didn't I tell you not to swim there? Yes, sir. Then why did you do it? Well, said the boy, I had my swimsuit with me, and I couldn't resist the temptation. Father said, well, why did you take the swimsuit with you? Son replied, well, so I would be prepared in case I was tempted to swim. We set ourselves up like that sometimes. You ever watched Hee Haw? Old Doc Campbell was confronted by a patient that declared he had broken his arm in two places, to which Doc Campbell replied, well, then stay out of them places. Now, there's actually some, he, he meant two places, not two places, okay, for you that are close. Now, that's actually good advice when it comes to temptation. Some of us say, well, I, I think I've got it licked now so I can go back around this. And we're just setting ourselves up. It is much easier to avoid temptation than resist temptation, okay? Much easier to avoid it. <clears throat> These two fellows, one came to the other one's house and says, he said, look, I know we're watching our weight, but I just baked all these cookies. Look at all these chocolate chip cookies. My wife baked them for me. Okay, well, let's just eat one. So each of them ate one. Well, you can't do that. Not with chocolate chip cookies, especially if they're still a little gooey, right? And so they reached in, they ate another, and they ate another and another, and they said, man, you know, we, we really need to stop eating these cookies. But let's just eat one more. Okay, they agreed, so they each ate just one more. Said, man, you know, we really need to stop because well, I'm about to get sick. Yeah, I'm about to get sick too, but man, they're so good. Let's just eat one more cookie. So they ate one more. They said, okay, we really need to stop. What are we going to do? And he, the guy said, I, I've got an idea here. And he got a box and he put the cookies in a box and he closed the box. He said, now we won't eat any more cookies. And the guy said, well, we could open the box. He said, hold on, I've got another idea. And he went and he got a string and he he tied a string around the box. He said, now we, we can't open the box. We won't eat any cookies. He said, well, we could cut the string. The guy said, hold on a minute. He went and got a tall ladder and put it on a real tall shelf at the top of, of his house there. He said, now we can't get to it. We won't eat any more cookies. And the guy said, well, we could climb the ladder, cut the string, open the box, and still could eat some. He said, hold on a minute. He went and got the box, cut the string, opened it up, and he went out to his yard. He said, here, birds, here's a lot of cookies. And he, he threw them all up in the air, and he said, what we've got to have is willpower, that strong desire not to do this. And he threw the cookies in the air, and the birds came, and they ate up all the cookies. And he said, there, now we won't eat, eat any of the cookies because now we have willpower. The guy said, well, you can have your willpower. I'm going home and bake a cake. The only way he was saying that we're not going to eat a cookie if there's not one around. Now, I am the same with Krispy Kreme chocolate-covered cream-filled donut. Do I have a witness? Miss Perry and Miss Hunt, yes, you two are food devils, okay? And I want to explain why. They, Whenever I say, it seems like any time I say, you know, I'm trying to watch what I eat, I go back there, I'm just going back to say hello to them, and every time, Miss Perry here will say, want a cookie? Want a brownie? Want a cupcake? Go ahead, yeah, go ahead, preacher, we have plenty, we have plenty. <laughs> well, preacher, just say no, I can't! So the best thing for me to do is not go back there. But I'll see Paul's entire day. <laughs> The 
arrival, I want you to look at verse 2, the arrival of the tempter. It says, being 40 days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat uh, nothing, and when they were ended, he afterwards hungry. Here we see the tempter. He's approaching Jesus Christ now to tempt him. One man said it this way, described temptation. He said, temptation is bait on a hook. 1 John 2.16 describes uh, our temptation this way. It says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of this world. What temptation is, is just simply bait on a hook. If you go fishing, Brother Joe went fishing. He loves to fish. Where's Brother Joe? Brother Joe, my friend, went fishing recently. He caught some mahi-mahi. You know what mahi-mahi is? Or the dolphin? How many did you catch, Brother? Nine mahi-mahi. Forty-eight? Forty-eight inches long, some of them. That's a big fish. Now, let me tell you something, folks. He didn't just tie an anchor on a string and throw it out there and drag until he snagged one with the anchor. So he put a, 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 some bait out there. He put something that would tempt them and draw them. That's what the devil does with us. He says, listen, I, 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 this you will enjoy. This. Oh, this will advance you right here. This will get you some notoriety right here. This will be a, a pleasure to you. We see here in verse 3, look at verse 3, and the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. We see here this lust of the flesh, this, this temptation through appetite. He said, look, if you're really the Son of God, you're hungry. You've been 40 days, 40 nights without bread. I know you're hungry. You know you want some bread. Man, if I were in that situation, and I, I would have, produce the big fat yeast roll right then. But there's a temptation there now to misuse his power. And Jesus had fasted 40 days and 40 nights. It would have been natural for him to desire to eat of this bread. As I said, the devil attacks us at our moments of weakness. In Matthew 26, 41, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. You hear Paul say that in the book of Romans when he says, O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? The things I, I would do, I don't. The things I would not do, I do those things. Who's, who's going to deliver me? Well, only Jesus Christ can, Paul acknowledges. One person said this about temptation. The fallacy which underlies temptation is one to which men are now most prone. That, number one, men must live. And then this false principle passes through degrees of comparison. And some men say, not only must we live, but we must live well. And then lastly, they say, well, not only must we live and live well, but we must, if possible, live very well. Their natural appetite, you know, the eyes of man are never satisfied. How much is enough? There's never enough. Not usually. I forget which man it was. It may have been Rockefeller, some very rich man. They said to him, how much money is enough? And he said, always one more dollar. Always one more dollar. He said, if I had one more dollar, I'd be satisfied, but then I get it, and I'm not satisfied. I've got to have another dollar. And the devil comes to us, and he tempts us through this, this temptation of our own appetite, not just the appetite for food, but the, the appetite uh, 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 for something that we desire, anything we desire. It can be a, an immoral relationship. It can be a, a relationship outside the, the bounds of scriptural relationship. It can be uh, financially fulfilling an appetite and compromising the principles of God's Word to have those things. Now listen, rather than listen to the voice of appetite, Jesus, what does he do? He listens to the voice of God. Look in verse number 4. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. 
says, look, yeah, I've been 40 days and 40 nights without bread. Yes, I would love to have bread. You're saying that if I'm the Son of God, do it. You're wanting me to prove I'm the Son of God, misuse my power. No, I don't need that. I don't need that to live. I must have the Word of God to live. And by the way, Jesus did not resist the temptation merely by quoting the Scripture. It was rather by living the Scripture. The application of this Scripture to real living. Satan's temptation was for Christ to misuse his power to fulfill his own designs. I spoke to a man this week I hadn't seen him in a while. I said, hey, man, how you doing? And uh, we began to talk. I said, I hadn't seen you in a long time. I'm Trent's daddy. Oh, yeah, I remember you. And I said, how's things going? He said, well, it was going good until this week. I said, oh, really, what happened? He said, I lost my job. The company shut down. I lost my job. I said, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I'll pray for you. He said, well, I don't know why. God has a plan for me. I said, you're absolutely right. He said, I've just got to listen to it. I've just got to walk in his will. He said, I've stepped out of it before. He said, one time I was offered a job, and I knew that the Lord did not want me to take that job, but I would be making $50,000 a year more than I was at my current job. And it's easy for us to say, oh, well, that must be God's will. But he said, I knew that's not what God wanted me to do, but because it was so much money, I took the job anyway. In 10 months, the business went bankrupt. And I was out of a job again. You know, it's very easy for us to rationalize our natural desires as being what God wants us to be. Well, I, I know this, this has got to be God's will. I mean, look at all these signs I've seen in spite of those signs going against the Word of God. We see his next temptation in verses 5 through 7. Look there. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain <clears throat> showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. The devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, also be thine. Here we see the temptation first through desire, now through ambition. The temptation here was to gratify ambition at the cheapest rate. There would be no self-denial, no self-sacrifice, no consuming spirit. None of that would be needful. Just simply pay a little homage to the world's king. That's what the devil was saying. In a supernatural way, somehow in a moment of time, he said, here's all the kingdoms of the world, all their glory, and if you will bow down and worship me, you can have it all. The devil presents himself as the rightful ruler of the world, dismissing the fact that Jesus Christ is already King of kings and Lord of lords. In Psalm chapter 2, verses 7 through 8, he said, I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee, ask of me. And I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession." Jesus Christ had already been declared by the Father as King of kings and Lord of lords. And here we see Satan uh, attempting to, uh, or tempting Jesus with his identity. If Satan would tempt Jesus with his identity, he'll tempt you regarding your identity in Christ as well. Oh, look, if, if you'll do this, here's what you'll get in return. Look, I know it's cheating a little bit. I know that's a little against the rules, but look how you can advance if you will do this. Listen, the devil in this world would have you to think that if you submit to them, then they can, then, uh, to them, you can then and only then enjoy life. Well, it's only if you do these things here and give in to your desires and, and, and follow your ambitions and your, your personal goals, it's only then that you can enjoy life. But no, that's not true. Listen, if I am saved, then I am a child of the king. If I'm saved, I'm joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Heaven is my home. God is my Father. The Holy Spirit is my comforter. The Lord is my strength. 
I have joy unspeakable at my disposal. I have peace that passes understanding always in reserve for me. I do not have to rely on the devil. I do not have to rely on this world. I do not have to rely on my own flawed understanding. I must simply rely on the Word of God. We see this next, this temptation of pride. In Luke chapter 4, 9, 9 through 11, And he brought him to Jerusalem, set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee, and in their hands, shall, uh, hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. Took him up on that pinnacle of the temple, and he said, Hey, listen, just jump off. Not to your death. You know that it's written. Now the devil's twisting the word of God. It's written that if you dash your foot against a stone, if you were to fall off a cliff, the angels would not let you die. They're going to catch you. And just think, if you did this here in Jerusalem, off the temple, everybody's going to see. And they're going to know at that point that you're the Son of God. Isn't that what you want? That's what you're here for, right? If that's what you're here for, go ahead, jump. What sensationalism this is going to be. But God's way of redemption was not in sensationalism. It's in the cross. In John 13, 14 through 15, the Word of God says, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. He said, look, just jump off now and, and they will make you king. He said, no, that's not going to work. Luke 10, 20. We, we learn here that uh, living for God is not always some sensational good feeling. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. He's telling the disciples as they come back, say, man, look, the spirits were subject to us, and we did all these miracles, and Jesus said, okay, okay, man, that's good, but calm down. You don't have to rejoice in those things. Don't, don't rejoice in the gift, rejoice in the giver. Don't rejoice in the fact that, that uh, spirits are subject to you. Rejoice in this and this alone, that your name is written down in heaven. Hey, look. Do I need to do a backflip to get from under the mic? All we have to have is Jesus Christ. That's it. It's our, our spiritual life is not something that's wrapped up with. You know, it's amazing how we, uh, uh, our human natures, we're looking for something new and, and something exciting, something to pump us up. Well, here's the thing. You go, and, and not that there's anything wrong with that, you go and something pumps you up, wonderful, but what happens when you leave? It's in Jesus Christ. It's, it's not in the sensationalism. It's not in the pride. It's not in having our ego stroke. Christ did not merely come to stir the emotions, but to speak the truth. Augustine said this, It was pride that changed angels into devils. It is humility that makes men as angels. Now, I want us to look here. Jesus, each time he's tempted with the, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, all sins can be categorized in one of those three ways right there. And every time he's tempted, he answers with this, it is written. It is written. It is said. He answers with the Word of God. I want to look here just for a moment uh, at the safety of Scriptures. Number one, when it comes to temptation, folks, listen, you do not have to give in. Well, preacher, I couldn't help it. Sure you could. Any sin I've ever committed, I've chosen to commit. Now, I'm sure there's been some things I've done on accident, wasn't thinking, and I've done on accident, but all in all, every sin I've committed is because I chose to do it. Nobody has ever held a gun to my head. Right? Nobody's ever said, well, kill your family if you don't do this. No, I've chosen to do it. And the Scriptures promise a way of escape. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 through 14. There is no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Sometimes we yield to temptation and we say, well, nobody understands. Hold on a minute. It's common to man. 
whatever temptation you face. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from adultery. One person said this about fleeing from temptation. When you flee temptation, make sure you don't leave a forwarding address. I, I've known people say, well, I'm, I'm quitting smoking, but I'm going to keep a pack right here just in case. Well, you're, you're probably not going to quit. Well, I'm quitting drinking, but I'm, I'm going to keep this bottle up here in the cabinet just in case. Well, I... I'm going to quit eating bread and stuff. Let's go to the next point. Psalm 119, 10 through 11 says this, With my whole heart have I sought thee. Well, let me not wonder from thy temple. Now listen to this. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not. I don't believe that's just talking about memorizing it. Because I took your word and I put it in my heart to keep it with me all the time. He said, I've taken your word, I've assimilated your word as part of me. You see, fleeing temptation, you ought to memorize scripture and it's good to quote that scripture and it helps. But it's not just in the quoting of the Scripture, it's in the application of the Scripture. It protects you. Somebody has a problem with pornography. Now they can quote, I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. While they're sitting in front of the computer looking at it. But if they take that, I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. They say, okay... I'm not going to that website. I'm not going to peek. I'm not just going to check it out for a little bit. I will say, I'm not going to put it in front of me. And if I have enough trouble that I can't handle it, I'll just get the Internet cut off. It means that much to me. And, and if I'm still seeing it with Wi-Fi on my phone, I'll, I'll throw away my phone or something. I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. Applying the Scriptures, the Scriptures keep us safe. When we apply the Scriptures, and look in verse number 4, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God, Jesus said. He's quoting from Deuteronomy 8, 3. Let me read that to you. And he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord, says man. Sir, this is not just a book to read. And you ought to read it. It is not just a book to memorize. But we ought to memorize portions of it. This is a book to live. This is a book to take. And this book can, if you, if you will live by the principles and the precepts of this book, you will find safety. You will find protection. Just as a child or a, child or a parent uh, sees their child getting close to the road and the parent's not close enough to reach out and grab the child back and they say, don't go in the road. The greatest safety that child has right then is to obey their parent's word. And don't go into the road. They could look at the parents and say, I heard you. You said, don't go in the road. My, hey, my parents said, don't go in the road. And walk on out the road and get smashed, as my Paul Paul said, flat as a flitter. The safety's in applying those words and saying, oh, you said don't go in the road. Okay, I won't. He says in uh, verse 8, get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. He's quoting there from Deuteronomy 6, 13, where he says, Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him and shalt swear by his name. In verse number 12, we see him answer back with, uh, uh, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And once again, he's quoting from uh, um, Deuteronomy 6, 16, Ye shall not tempt the Lord your God. And so he was saying, Listen, I know what the Word of God says, 
and I'm going to obey the Word of God, not you. The Word of God says that I don't have to have that bread. All I need is the Word of God, so I'm going to obey His Word, devil. The Word of God says that uh, I can only worship the Lord thy God, so I'm not going to worship you. So you give me all the kingdoms of the world. By the way, they're going to be mine eventually anyway. So I'm not going to worship you. I will worship only God. Sometimes that ambition, it takes on some tricky forms, doesn't it? Well, man, if I, if, I, if I do this, I know I can make more money. Let me tell you something, folks. More money is not the cure for your woes. Many times, more money brings more woes, more expensive woes. So that's not the answer. Well, if I just had this different job, hold on, and, and unless God... Uh, pressing upon you to move for some reason or the word of God is leading you to move look a new job is not the answer the word of God is the answer we see the believers victory over temptation the word of God it gives us victory listen to this verse in Psalm 119 11 thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee Psalm 119 9 wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by what taking heed thereto according to thy word. It means obeying it. Just obey the book. Not only does the word of God give us victory over temptation, but a spiritual walk does. In Galatians 5, 16, this I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. In Acts chapter 2, verse 42, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in breaking of bread and in prayers It is that walk with Christ. It is that walk with our brothers and our sisters in Christ. And we've been talking on Sunday nights about true Bible fellowship. Hey, listen to me. We need each other. Jeremiah Smith was mentioning it to me, and I I saw an article. I, I have not had the chance to research it, to see the validity of it. But some are now pushing that if the... Supreme Court says that uh, homosexual unions are now legal uh, nationwide in spite of what the states say. Some are already begin to, beginning to push that Christian ministers will be required to perform those ceremonies if called upon to do so. Now we're not at that yet, but just the fact that some are saying it and believe they can push it through. Listen, When that stuff starts happening and Christians begin to lose their rights, we're going to realize more and more, man, I wish I was close to my brother. We're going to need each other. Satan, as Charles Spurgeon said, Satan has always uh, hated Christian fellowship. It's his policy to keep Christians apart. Anything which can divide saints from one another he delights in, he attaches far more importance to godly intercourse than we do. Since union is strength does his best to promote separation. One of those things that helps us in times of temptation, I don't know how many friends I've said, look, I know you struggle with this, and we've talked about it, and say, boy, I, I want victory over this, and I'd say, look, when you start to fall, when you're really struggling, call me. Let's talk through it. I never get a phone call. I maybe have had one. Oh, I didn't want to bother you. No, we need each other, folks. Submission to God gives victory. Matthew 6, 24, no man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. James 4, 7 through 8, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Surrender to God. We, we, we set ourselves up to fail when we say, well, I'm doing this because I can. You ever heard somebody say that? Why'd you do that? Because I can. Man, nothing, just about nothing makes the world pop somebody's nose more than that statement. If you would hit him, no, I would just point. I'll pay the entree. Because I can't, because I wanted to. Satan will t- tempt you with your own appetites. He will tempt you with ambition. He will tempt you with pride. Close walk with Christ gives us victory. 
he was touched with the same temptation as we are. And if our walk with him, he can help us out. You know, there's something about talking to somebody when you're going through a trial that has been through the same trial. Isn't there something about that? I mean, you know, boy, they, they know where I'm coming from. There's some people, they can come talk to me. They know, hey, Pastor Wise, he's been through some of the same, same things I have. And some people would say, well, Pastor Wise hasn't been through anything like that before. So I talked to this person. There's something about talking to somebody, about walking with them. The Word of God tells us that he was tempted in all points, just like we are. If you'll learn to walk with him, he will learn to help you to walk with him. You don't have to do the things you do in this world. You don't have to. I'm not saying it's easy. But I'm saying he has given us victory. So we'll live by it. Those things you say, well, but, but if I do this, things will be so much better. Uh, everything that glitters isn't gold. Learn to walk by the word. Not by your ambition. By your appetite, by the Word. Let's walk by the Word. Our heads, close your eyes, and